Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Um, so we're we're drinking the same whiskey. Yeah, we we liked it so. Yeah, went went right back to it again. Turns out Gary made a good choice for Christmas presents. All right, happens every now and then. Yeah, actually, I mean, <laughs> so um, I got gifts from more than one person. That's like, here's a whiskey. <laughs> like, yeah, it's it's hard to go wrong. Yeah, I got Weller from somebody else. <sighs> nice, nice. Anyway. Um, this one's really good too, and it's got a very different kind of flavor. So it's the, it's the four four roses. What was the small batch? Small batch, yeah. Like four I said, roses, I thought they were all batch. small batch, but I I don't think so because this was the the higher shelf one. So. Yeah, <laughs> it was on the higher shelf. It was on the higher <laughs> shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Put it right in front of your eyes. Exactly. Uh, no, good choice. Yeah. Well done. I hadn't had it before, so. I appreciate it. Definitely enjoying it. Um, I was thinking about making cocktails for tonight. Uh, they had a, um, a special on citrus uh, at the fresh market over the weekend. I guess I bought a bunch of lemons, ah. so I could I could make some sours, yeah. various kinds of sours. I had mm. a um, uh, the white lady cocktail last night, which is like a sidecar except with gin instead of brandy. So it's uh, gin and lemon juice and um, triple sec. Ah. That's it was not, quite tasty. I was going to say, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, it was quite tasty. I had a sidecar again recently. Yeah, yeah I mean, just I not... guess I've gotten so used to the gin version instead of the brandy version that it just didn't <laughs> it didn't strike me the same way. Doesn't do it for you anymore? Yeah, I guess not. I mean, it's still a good cocktail, but now I have to say, given the choice... You have a preference now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Unfortunately, like... At least some places people know what a sidecar is when you order it. Yeah. And nobody knows what a white lady cocktail is when you order it. <laughs> they just look at you. No idea. You're going to have explain. to give me some ingredients, buddy. <laughs> yep. And proportions. Yep. You know. But that's good. It, that way, you know, you get it exactly how you want it, right? Exactly. Yeah. No, no spinoffs. It could be worse. <laughs> there are worse things. Yeah. Um, well, I, I thought that we might start kind of where we left off or at least on a um a topic that's come up more than once on the podcast yeah um but our discussion on the last podcast which was only a couple days ago uh and you know maybe if you listen to them back to back it'll seem like one it seems like it never <laughs> one, stops right one fluid thing um <laughs> is to yeah. just talk about the justice system here yeah. in the u.s I, I mean we addressed it a little bit um talking about the uh, dui thing yeah. Um, and so I, I think it's worth bringing up here because this was one of the concessions that I got from you on our disagreement about DUI laws is that yeah. that you would. In, um, the penalties would be different. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so as it is, uh, most real crimes I don't consider DUI a real crime, but <laughs> <laughs> most real crimes um, carry with it uh, some incarceration time. Yeah. Right. And I think that that is at cross purposes to what a justice system is supposed to do. Like yeah. the idea of a justice system is to provide justice to the victims. I'd agree right? with that. Um, can, can we agree that there are not crimes without victims? Oh, I can definitely agree with that. In general. I mean, obviously the DUI thing kind of falls flat on its face there. Yeah, I was going to ask that next. Yeah, no, I knew that was coming. Yeah, I mean, I, overall, absolutely. I mean, that's I'm definitely I believe in that. I mean, I just, I do feel like this is one of Except the, for this one odd exception. This DUIs, one odd exception, yeah. Where there is no victim. Yeah. It, it's it's like I say. I'm not gonna say it's not a problem for me to kind of to thread that needle there, mm -hmm. but um, I just it's like I say it's a bridge too far for me. But I like I say it's <laughs> definitely. Can you guys hear that in the mic? That was a really loud truck that went by. <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. So if crimes must have victims, then yes. the idea of a justice system is to make the victim whole in some way yeah. to try and provide um, some kind of compensation to the victim to make up for what they've lost. Agreed. Okay. Um, 
Our justice system doesn't really do that at all. No, and that's part of the problem in general with the way our justice system and our laws are are set up right now. Um, I mean, there's for one, there's so many laws that just shouldn't be laws anyway. And then when you get caught up in our justice system, the way it's set up, you it there is no nobody wins when somebody ends up into the justice system. Like there's just you end up with people in jail that shouldn't be, and even if they should be, they come out worse than they went in. Mm-hmm. And there's just it's it's a bad system all the way around. And the victim doesn't really get anything out of it. Exactly. Um. Well, I, so but I would disagree with you on a point there. Okay. Um, you said nobody wins when people get involved in the justice system. I would say that there are two groups that win actually. Okay. Um. One is the attorneys. Well, yeah. The attorneys win, and two is the state. Yeah. Well, the state definitely wins. I mean, I don't know about enough about the attorney end of it to, to cite you one way or the other, but the state definitely wins. I mean, it's definitely a win-win for them. I mean, it's revenue, and it's control and power. Yeah. Well, and, and I've said before that I have a problem with the the state having a monopoly on the legal system anyway, yeah. um, that they uh, write the laws, enforce the laws, and interpret the laws. Yeah, um, and they're not accountable to anybody. So if, if you're wronged through the justice system, the only way you have to try to write that is to go back through the same system mm-hmm. that's already screwed you. Yeah. Like, there's no way, and, and you can say, well, there's different, there's accountability there and blah, 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 but the reality is there isn't. Yeah, like, I was going to ask the, the, I mean, the obvious question there is who's accountable? Exactly. Well, nobody, there is no accountability there. It's, it's just not. I'm just saying somebody that would argue the other side of that would think, would say, well, you know, I mean, that's why you have justices and blah, 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 or mm-hmm. different justices and appeals and things like that. Yeah. But the truth is, is that it doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah. Well, they're all on the same team. Exactly. And it's not your team. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, you know, that's that's certainly true. I, I think that the big problem is that the purpose of the justice system should be to try and compensate victims for their losses. Now, I know that it can't be a perfect compensation either, yeah. Um, I, we certainly don't want to go into eye for an eye kind of thing. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, that doesn't, you know, that just, uh, well, um, revenge type yeah. uh, of, um, uh, punishments tend to just incite more revenge. Yeah. Right? Because it doesn't, it's, it does, just doesn't work. Looking for mm-hmm. revenge is in any situation, whether it be like what we're talking about here or even like in your home life or things like that. It's just that's a that's a not a good path to go down. Yeah, well, you end up with some some situations, I think, though, where you run into the same problem that we complain about with the state when we talk about like taxation. Yeah, um, that you know we're all slaves to the state in some way because a significant portion of our income, like we work for a significant portion of the year just to pay the state. Yep. Got to pay um, big daddy state. The, you know, the, we, we work so that the money can go to the state, not to, to us. We're the ones working for it. Doesn't that make us slaves to some degree? Well, I mean, you can run into the same problem with a, a compensatory justice system too, right? Yeah. Where um, somebody commits a crime, a property crime against somebody, does some damage or whatever, and then they are uh, forced to pay um, for the losses and maybe they don't have the money on hand. So now they're working for this person, uh, yeah. to try and pay them back in a way. And is that some kind of form of slavery or a portion, you know, like it's a still, to me, it, to me, it's still not though, because I mean, they still made the decision to, to rob or whatever the case may be. Yeah. You know, well, and that's the difference I think, right. Is that the state there was still is a taking conscious your decision made. There. Yeah. The state is taking your money for nothing. Yeah, no matter um, what. It doesn't matter. There's no avoiding it. There, yeah. You know. um, if you're paying somebody back for some crime that you've committed against them, yeah. then you took and you're repaying them. They're not They're not stealing it from you. Exactly. And once right. you pay them, you've paid your debt. <laughs> The, well, you never pay your debt as far as taxes go. Like that's, <laughs> I mean, and that's and to me that's yeah. the difference. I mean, that's, that's true. You know, well, I was thinking of it in other terms because we were talking about um, last time uh, that once you've served your time, yeah, uh, once you've completed your obligations to the justice system, if you've committed a crime, yeah. that should be the end of it. But it's not. It never is. Yeah. Um, and I don't know that it ever would be in a, in a social situation either. But yeah. um, the idea that 
uh, judges and so forth that you touched on this earlier, the idea that judges um, or law enforcement agents or anybody else is, is therefore above reproach because of their title yeah. um, is just they're all people. Yep. You know, exactly. uh, people are self-interested. Yep. Um, people have, uh, you know, they have their own point of view that they're trying to enforce. Um, so this is a, you know, this is a problem as long as people are involved. And in smaller scale societies, you do have judges. Yep. Um, judges are picked because, you know, they're the wisest people in the small community or that kind of thing. Um, there's a lot more input from other people in the community in those kind of situations than there is in, in our current justice system. Yeah. Um, and I, I also have a problem. I mean, I'm kind of bouncing from one topic to another, so you can just stop me <laughs> just, whenever. Just, yeah. Um, but I, I do also have a problem with the idea that justice is blind. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, ideally they say that the, you know, justice should be blind is just the facts and, um, that there should be kind of a uniform way of treating everybody who's done the same thing. And I don't believe in that either. That doesn't work. And that's, that's part of the reason I have such a big problem with mandatory minimums. Mm-hmm. Because that's, that's how mandatory minimums work is, well, you did this, so automatically, regardless of what the judge thinks, this is the punishment there. Mm-hmm. And there's a problem there because so many situations have a lot of nuance involved. Right. You know, and, and that's that's the reason we don't have, like, computers making these decisions. Yeah. Because you could have a computer make these decisions, but there will be no, once again, there's no nuance in that. Yeah. You know? If you want objectivity, then people is not the way to do it. Yeah. But you don't want objectivity. You, yeah. you do want subjectivity, I think. Exactly. Um, you want uh, somebody who's going to consider the totality of circumstances when they assign a punishment. Exactly. Um, you know, if, if you have the situation where uh, somebody robbed from a store um, for a thrill yeah. versus somebody who robbed from a store because they didn't have money to purchase food, yeah. um, there's a difference between those two people. Your your computer yeah. out, puts out the same punishment for both of them, yeah. but I don't think that they both deserve the same punishment, even yeah. though they both committed the same crime. Same crime, yeah. Um, and, and that's the purpose of selecting judges, is people that you think can be wise enough to... To make these decisions. Appropriately. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, that's really all I have on that. I think I just yeah. thought it was something interesting to bring up. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, to pull out a little got you on the um, DUI <laughs> not having a victim yeah. thing once you agreed with me well, that and I think crimes if, have victims. I think if, if, <laughs> if you're going to have DUI laws, which I do support, mm-hmm. um, I think that the punishments should 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 go along with what the crime actually was, mm-hmm. which, I mean— to me, if you're getting behind the wheel drunk, drunk enough to be stopped and gotten a DUI, mm-hmm. maybe some some rehab or something is is called for. I don't think we should lock them in a cage. Yeah. Well, uh, then uh, that's actually something worth talking about. Then what's the point of having a law? Yeah. Right. Um, if you have a law that says that there should be uh, some form of punishment for engaging in this activity yeah. um, then you have to enforce it that way yeah. whereas if you don't have the law then you have law enforcement that can make a judgment call if yeah. they see somebody weaving around that hasn't actually done any damage to anybody at this point yeah. they can pull them over um, either give them a ride home make them pick up their car the next day or even like if it if the person's belligerent and so forth take yeah. them in and throw them in a cage overnight until they sober until up they in the morning up, yeah. I mean you think about that kind of thing in the in the old west stories you know yeah. where they picked up the drunk guys on the street and they just threw them in the locker overnight until they sobered up yeah. well um, and in the, in the movies they're something. always there like extensively because like I, I can't because they're think. there night after night after night <laughs> exactly you know? yeah. so maybe I mean, this person needs help <laughs> yeah and maybe they do um, and See, but I, I've always found that uh, um, peer pressure yeah. uh, has a m- much greater effect on people's behavior than laws. Okay, yeah. Um, and especially if you're looking at a, at a community level involvement, yeah. you know, people can get involved with the town drunk yeah. and try and push them in the right direction. And that those people's opinions and pressure from individuals is, I think, more effective yeah. than just threatening them with jail time yeah well see and i'm not for threatening them with jail time like i just don't mm-hmm. think that's the i just don't see the the point of that i don't see where that gets you in the end of the day whereas like doing something to try to move these people into the proper direction 
or at least convince them that they shouldn't be driving drunk, even if they're going to get drunk every day. Like, yeah, whatever. but you don't need laws to do that. Yeah. See, now, what you've also set up with laws is now they have a record. Yeah. Um, that this can affect, you know, other Employment things in their and lives. Things like and, yeah. that. Yeah. Um. So, so I, I don't, I don't expect to come to an agreement on no, this. But I, I'm just, I'm just trying to push for as many concessions as I can. Yeah. And you're uh, trying to poke as many holes in my. In me as you can. Well, that too. I never did get a chance to put this up to on the Liberty Mike. I haven't been on Facebook hardly at all. So, well, luckily, I don't feel like uh, democracy is an appropriate way of making decisions. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, because you know you're going to lose. Oh, absolutely, on this one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely on this one. So, um, but that's okay. in fact, somebody said that to me at work today. Yeah, uh, I said, uh, yeah, I agree with I agree with Liberty Larry yeah. on the DUI thing. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, well, I suspect that most people will. <laughs> most people will. Yep. Yeah. Um, but you know, and I, I made the same point to him, which, uh, do you think a crime needs a victim? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. there isn't um, one here. Yeah. Who's like, the victim in, in a this. DUI? Yeah. And he said the, the, you know, person whose property was damaged or, or was hurt or whatever. I said, no, but we're talking about we're pulling talking somebody about DUI. over before We're that not happens. talking about right. once, there's already once they've laws done something. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. already laws to deal with that. Exactly. You know? There's, there's other laws to deal with that. Exactly. Um, Unfortunately, what they do is that they uh, they bring um, revenue to the state, not to the person who is actually damaged. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's just another example of things that we've talked about. I mean, we had the uh, uh, To Protect and Serve episode. Yeah. Um, there's at least one other that was almost exclusively about this kind of thing, but I can't think of specifically what it was. Uh, where we talk about that, the state is set up. The state and the agents of the state are set up to protect the state and agents of the state, not to protect you. Exactly. And so if you have a loss because of a crime that was committed by somebody, the state's not trying to make you whole. Yeah. It's just trying to... Collect for collect. itself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so moving on to the next topic. This is our first... It's January 2nd. Um, this is our first episode in the new year. Happy New Year's. It's Happy New Year. Yeah, and now it's now it's safe to say it. So yeah. happy new year, everyone! Happy yes. new year, Gary. Um, Same to you. N- no longer bad luck. Yeah. Uh, but then the the I think a good question is, uh, what do you think was the most important story in 2019? I, I don't know. I mean, I thought about it a little bit, but I mean, to me, I think it's got to be the Mueller report, and not so much because of what it me, just because it was covered so heavily. And then fell so flat on its face <laughs> when it was actually. But you think back to the beginning of this year, that's all you heard was Mueller, Mueller, Mueller. I mean, I don't know how, I mean, if, if you watch the news, you heard about it day in and day out. Um, and then it, it was just. Yeah, a, he's finally going to, he's going to save us all by finally getting gonna, this traitor Trump out of the office. Yeah. Exactly. Man, that's all you heard. And mm-hmm. it was, it was insane. And then it just fell flat on its face and then it was gone. But to me, there's a large, there's a, that's a big deal. Like mm-hmm. the fact that the media could be so hard on something, completely get it wrong. And yeah. it's, and, and they think there's no repercussions for that at all. Yeah. In reality, the repercussions are people just don't, I don't know that people ever really trusted the media, but they really don't now. Yeah. And well, those they're numbers definitely have given got a lot of reason not to. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's certainly an interesting story in that, um, it was going to show that we had a Manchurian candidate in the white house. And that's what we heard all the time. There was all this Russian collusion, and they spent two years investigating this, two plus years investigating this. Um, And in the end, the report said that not a single person in the Trump campaign was involved in collusion with the Russians. Yeah, right. Um, so everything that it promised, it delivered absolutely none of none it. None of it, yeah. And, now, uh, people went to jail over it, but it wasn't Yeah, but for, it was all process crime well, stuff. Exactly. Was, uh, oh, well, and older crimes. And like old there was crime the tax stuff. stuff and which, the, which once again brings up another thing. Like, Trump is just, like, I don't believe he's squeaky clean, but the no. fact that he can get through a probe like this mm-hmm. with nothing directly tied to him yeah. says something. Yeah. Well, I, I actually, I do think that he's a patriot. I think he's misguided. I, I agree um, with that. But I, I think that he's a patriot. I think that... He wants to do what's best for the country. He yeah. just doesn't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's... Yeah, exactly. So. Um, and then some of the people that were involved in the investigation, I actually 
question their motives a lot more. Yeah. Um, do they want what's best for the country or not? No. I, oh, I absolutely uh, question their motives. Um, so, yeah, that's a that's an interesting one. Um, I, I disagree. Oh, so, I, so I, what, I, think, I was going to ask, so what, yeah, what was yours? I, I don't think that that was the most important story. All I right. think the most important story of 2019 was the Afghanistan papers. Ah, okay. Um, I, I mean, it wasn't a surprise. Yeah, for any of us that were keeping up. Yeah. Um. If you if you were out there looking at alternative media and like really reading, uh, what was going on, uh, in the Middle East and or had been keeping track of it. If yeah. if you listened to Scott Horton's podcast and or read his book, yeah. you already knew all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Pretty this, much. None of this was a surprise. Um, right? And of course, he's not my only source. There's plenty mm-hmm. of others uh, out there. But, um, I mean, that's a good. But one. he's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so it, it wasn't a surprise, but – I mean, I guess I, the surprise of it was that they actually reported it. It yeah. didn't get a whole lot of attention. I was going to um, say it didn't get picked up a whole lot. Yeah. I mean, it, Unfortunately. it didn't get nearly the attention that it deserves. But I do find it interesting that a mainstream media site, the Washington Post in this case, mm-hmm. actually published several stories – identifying that their sources were lying to them the whole time. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, those same media sources had been telling us how well the war had been going on for all this time, too. Exactly. Um, but I, I find it interesting that they actually published it, and I hope that enough people paid attention to it or that it caught enough people's attention. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I don't. I think that it's too far away for most people. It is. That it, it really doesn't matter. And, um, you know, we covered the Afghanistan papers on this podcast – and tried to point out that literally 25 cents out of every dollar that you spend to the U.S. government funds this. Yeah, <laughs> so right. maybe, you, maybe you should yeah. think that it's important, too, um, exactly. even though it's far away. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that that was the biggest news story is just another example of how your government is willing to lie to you mm-hmm. um, about these kinds of things. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I... I Talk about undermining, like your story essentially undermined the um, trustworthiness of the of the press of the media, yeah. um, and my story undermines the credibility of the government. Government, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's interesting um, that we both picked those two d- different ones. <laughs> yeah, um, and I think both of them are important for exactly those reasons. I agree, uh, and, and that's probably the point that that's most important about each of them. Yeah, is what it says about where what you're it, getting your information. What it says about these institutions. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. Um. Okay. Well, I had one more story, and we'll we'll try and we're gonna make this kind of a short podcast. It's only been two days, after all. Yeah. Exactly. Um. But I think it's worth talking about, uh, and I didn't have enough information really. And there's some thing, there's some other things that I do want to talk about, but I want to dig a little bit deeper. Um. Have more information when we when we when have we a actually, full we, time yeah. period to get yeah. ready. Yeah. Well, and I say that like. I mean, I, I want to go into more background on uh, Ukraine. Okay. Um, I, I think it's important that people understand what's, what's going been going on, on there, yeah. there over the last decade. Because yeah. if you're listening to the media, you're not getting the whole no, story. No, no, I can no. tell you that Definitely for sure. Not. I mean, you should have read this, um, um, what do you call it? Just like a, uh, it's not a memo, um, but it's like the regular correspondence that our um, oh, burn that sends yeah, out. That, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What, what does he call um, his thing? Newsletter. It's like yeah. a newsletter. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. His thing on Ukraine was just. I was like, well, that's just a lie, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. that's only part of the truth there. And uh, you're leaving him out the probably the most important part of that. It, yeah. So, yeah. Um, for those of you that don't have the time to to dig all this up, uh, I do. I would really like to fill in. Um, some information on yeah. Ukraine. Just to get, at least give the whole picture. Yeah. yeah. Um, we can do it like, uh, um, what was, what's that Canadian guy uh, that did the YouTube videos um, that were sometimes good and sometimes weren't? Um, I don't know. Uh, Molyneux, right? Oh, Molyneux. Yeah, yeah. And it, so it would be the, the truth about X. Yeah. Um, so maybe we'll do about the, you know, the truth about Russia, Ukraine, or the truth about Crimea, or I don't know, something. Huh. Sounds like fun. Yeah. <laughs> So sometime soon, we'll do that. Coming soon. Um, for now, though, yeah. uh, I do think that we should talk about what's going on in Iraq. Okay. Um, so if you listen to the news media or your government, um, what you will learn is that uh, history began on December 27th, 
when um, some group fired a rocket into a uh, U.S. base in uh, Kirkuk, Iraq. Um, and it, uh, it killed a U.S. contractor and um, injured several uh, U.S. servicemen and a couple of Iraqi servicemen as well. Yeah. All right. Um, the U.S. blamed a uh, Shia militia um, known as uh, Kataib Hezbollah um, and, uh, you know, claimed they're an Iran-backed militia because they're Shia. Yeah. Not that really just, for any other reason that than that. That just makes them Iranian. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, but this group is part of uh, Iraq's official security forces. Okay. Um, and then two days later, on December 29th, uh, the U.S. launched airstrikes against five of the militia's facilities uh, near the Syrian border. And... Um, killed at least 25 and injured another 55, give or take. Yeah. And also I want to point out, like I said, the initial, um, the initial attack on the U S base was in Kirkuk, which is in, uh, um, Northeastern Iraq. Yeah. Um, and then we, the U S launched airstrikes against bases, uh, near the Syrian border. Yeah. Which is the western, which is a whole other part of the country <laughs> border of, yeah, of Iraq. Yeah. Um, there's at least 500 kilometers between the base where the the U.S. base that was attacked and the bases that they uh, attacked in retaliation, supposedly. Yeah. Uh, and as usual, the U.S. has not provided any evidence um, that the uh, Kataib Hezbollah had anything to do with it. Yeah. Um, they're just, they just happen to be the group that has probably the most animosity against the U S right now Yeah, that's there. Um, but once again, um, they, this group is part of the official security, the recognized security forces of, uh, of Iraq. They're, they're a sovereign so, Iraqi security force. Yeah. So it's like our, the police department or whatever. Yeah. 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 Something <laughs> like that. Or yeah. uh, national guard would probably okay. be more appropriate. So it's like their national guard. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you know the U.S. is saying that the the that um, U.S. service members were attacked in Iraq and uh, and two Iraqi servicemen um, were injured and the U.S. response is to uh, injure and kill seventy some other Iraqi servicemen. Uh, right. Yeah. That basically had nothing to do with any of this. Yeah. Which yeah. yeah who probably had nothing to do with the attack at all. Yeah. Um. And as a response to that, uh, Iraqi protesters gathered at the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad, Baghdad um, to which the U.S. immediately blamed Iran, yeah. saying that the Iran had organized these protests uh, against the U.S. in uh, at the Baghdad Embassy. Um, Trump tweeted, Iran is orchestrating an attack on the U.S. Embassy in Iraq to those many millions of people in Iraq who also want... Freedom and who don't want to be dominated and controlled by Iran, this is your time. Huh, really? Okay. Now, I just want to remind everybody that it was just like a month or so ago that we were talking about on this podcast these protests that were going on in Iraq and how they were kind of aimed at uh, the Iranian influence in Iraq. Yeah. Um, that the Iraqis were, uh, were protesting Iranian influence in Iraq and they ended up uh, actually, um, over time, pushing uh, the... Uh, the Iraqi Prime Minister um, Ab- Adil Abdel Mahdi. <laughs> Love sorry. these names. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Adil Abdel Mahdi um, to resign uh, just a few weeks ago when the Iranian consulate was burned. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. <laughs> in Iraq. But, so obviously the the protests were kind of pushing against Iraq, but then now, <laughs> yeah, now yeah. I should say, um, after the U.S. Uh, launched this attack against Iraqi security forces in Iraq, hmm. um, and it got the uh, attention of the Grand Ayatollah, uh, Ayatollah in Iraq, which is Ali al-Sistani. You've probably okay. heard this name before. Yeah. Um, he said that uh, only Iraqi authorities are entitled to deal with these practices, meaning um, these kind of attacks against uh, U.S. Um, forces in Iraq. Um, that his position essentially um, is that the U.S. is permitted to have bases in Iraq in order to fight ISIS, yeah. not to launch attacks against Iraqi forces within Iraq. Yeah, no joke. Um, <laughs> I and bet that, he did say that. <laughs> yeah, and that if Iraqi forces were involved in the attack on the U.S., which again I said without evidence, yeah, um, 
U.S. has made this claim, uh, that it is the responsibility of the Iraqi government to deal with it, not the U.S. government to deal with it oh, unilaterally. I absolutely agree with that. And the, if that is the case, it should, they should, justice should be brought to those individuals, not the group or whatever. Like, I mean, that's like if a handful of National Guard guys, like, done something and yeah. then you like completely attack national guard people from on the other side of the country for yeah. it like, if the mississippi national guard was responsible for some attack and you attack the arkansas national guard yeah i mean that's basically what they did retaliation yeah. yeah i mean that's my take of that yeah i i, I don't think that that's a, it's an unfair characterization yeah. um so this is the point that i would like to make um is that it's not, before I tell you the worst part of this. Uh-oh, so <laughs> okay. it gets worse than that. It gets worse. <laughs> oh, wow. um, it is that it, the Iraqis were focused their, their anger and their attention on the Iranian influence in their government yeah. until this happened. Yeah. Um, and now they're focusing, and it, I mean, there was some Iranian stuff that was painted on the U.S. Embassy, like pro-Iranian stuff painted at the U.S. Embassy when they... Um, when they were protesting outside and so forth. Yeah. So there certainly is some pro Iranian influence there. Yeah. Um, but after this event, the protests have shifted to be anti U S protests instead of anti Iranian protests. Yeah. And there's just a couple of things I think that are important to point out about this. The problem isn't specifically Iran or specifically the U S it's foreign influence on their government. Yeah. Um, what these people are pushing for is self-determination. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that if it comes down to it, between the U.S. and the Iranians, if there's going to be uh, some foreign power influencing their government, they probably would rather it be the Iranians than the U.S. Because yeah. they find themselves more well, Because at least they're Muslim. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but the, the point is that it's not about uh, Muslim or non-Muslim or even uh, Sunni or Shia. Yeah. Um, the well, problem is that they want to be able to determine for themselves their government. They don't want U.S. influence or Iranian influence. Well, because, the problem is that they're not Iraqi people that are influencing their government. Because here's how this would more than likely play out, at least the way I see it, is that you... So right now they're pushing against the U.S. The U.S. Mm-hmm. leaves, mm-hmm. then they're not going to be open arms to the Iranians because right. they're not going to want them there either. Yeah. They're going to want Iraqi people. Yeah, which is yeah. kind of similar to what you know, one of the older wars here, the 80s Afghanistan stuff, yeah. um, where uh, the Afghanis were happy to accept U.S. help to get the Russians out of Afghanistan. Yeah. But then when the U.S. didn't leave Afghanistan, then they turned against the U.S. too. Yeah, exactly. Like, they're, the Iraqis aren't going to be satisfied with the U.S. leaving. Yeah. They'll be satisfied when everybody else everybody leaves. Everybody leaves. Exactly. You know? And so we may be the the focus of their ire right now, but as yeah. soon as we were out of the way, they would refocus back on Iran. Exactly. Or Saudi Arabia. Arabia or Israel whoever it is. or whoever they think yeah. it is that's influencing their government yeah. because they want Iraqis influencing their government, not other sovereignties. Exactly. Um, so now for the worst part is that the U.S. is uh, moving um, thousands of troops into Kuwait uh, in preparation for a new Iraqi invasion, I guess. <laughs> well, we have to. Uh, I mean, we yeah, we got to go get them now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We, it's, it's surge time now. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's exactly what they're, they're talking about, a little mini surge in yeah, Iraq. That's exactly um, what, I mean, That it, this fits a pattern. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here we are again. And, of course, the, the proper response is to just get our people out of there. Yeah. There's, there's uh, and a really what, easy fix here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and that's what the Iraqis are pushing for at this point, too. Even yeah. the, the, you know, the government people that have backed the U.S. for the most part yeah. are saying, uh, maybe it's time you just, like, pack up your stuff and go. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, it has been 16 years. Yeah. Exactly. 17 exactly. years. 17. 18? 17. Well, we went in 2003. Okay. 17. Yeah. yeah. 18 in Afghanistan. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, we went maybe to a little more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Nineteen in Afghanistan. Yeah, depending on the dates. <laughs> Which yeah, is we somewhere went around nine eleven. <laughs> so I mean, it's still, I guess, yeah. um, it, it's eight eighteen, I suppose, for a while yet, because yeah. it was the end of two thousand one that we entered. Yeah. But anyway, the point being that um, people generally want to govern themselves. Yeah. And, yeah. you know... It goes back to one of our basic principles. Absolutely. Self-government. Yeah. And it's an easy one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you would think. You would think, but yeah. it doesn't seem to be the case. Well, it's the tendency of governments to uh, grow and accumulate, um, suppress opposition, and then oppress their people. Yep. 
And, you know, then you need more people to do that too. <laughs> exactly. So you start taking extra territory. Yep. Um, and, you know, this is just another, like, imperialistic um, approach. And it's funny because, like, the U.S. centuries ago, well, at least a century ago, century yeah. and a half ago, yeah. um, was very critical of British imperialism in the world. Yeah. Um, but uh, now we're just a part of it. Can't we, beat them, join them. Our, yeah. We, well, we, we got them to stop being imperialistic, so we took up the mantle. <laughs> so, yeah, somebody has to do it. Like. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah, might as well be us. And on that note, <laughs> that so, sad, sad, sad note. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. And yeah. uh, we'll be back again in a week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, um, follow us on Facebook and subscribe on iTunes and Podbean. Uh, like and share. Um, reviews are good. Uh, comments are good. Comments are good. Good comments are good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Conversation starters. <laughs> yeah. Um, for those of you that have been leaving comments, uh, you know, Carter, Spencer, um, some of you that have been commenting here and there, certainly appreciate it. And uh, we we hope that you continue listening, too. And um, I guess that's it, right? That's you it. have anything more to add? I think we got it, man. Okay. Well, uh, in that case, uh, try to stay free. All right. Train how you fight. And ciao. Later.